today let's talk about what is a diode made of and how does it work? What direction does the current flow? Why do we use no bias? What is your calibration process? Do you correct for temperature and pressure? How are they dependent on SSD, field size, and angle? And if a diode is 10% off what is expected, what do you do in the clinic? So what is a diode made of and how does it work? So we have, as we can see in this diagram, which some of the diagrams you get within the exam probably aren't going to be labeled. So note that you need to know even the labels and specifically, it'd probably be good just to be able to draw this yourself, honestly. But we have an N-type silicon like a phosphorus that, that has an extra electron, which is called a donor. That is combined with a P-type semiconductor that has, uh, typically it's like boron, which has many, what we call a quote unquote holes to collect the electrons. So this normally is N-type is 0.1 micrometer and the P-type is 20 micrometer. So, I mean, we're talking extremely small. And when combined, there's a depletion region that is made. And the electrons go to the P-type semiconductor and vice versa. The holes go to the N-type. So this makes an electric field that we're seeing right here. And when the radiation crosses this depletion region, it creates a current. That current can then be measured with an electrometer by causing more electron hole pairs. So that is how you're ultimately getting current that you can then relate to dose. That is how a diode works. It's very important to remember how this works. I try to lay it out in a simplified version. It can get pretty confusing and it's somewhat, I even, I agree, it's somewhat hand wavy, but it's important for you to know that. So what direction does a current flow? It flows from the N-type semiconductor to the P-type. Now, why is there no bias? So with unbiased diodes are less prone to radiation damage and they have less dark current, which ultimately just means residual current after radiation effects. So if you absolutely must have a bias, it's best to use 0.7 volts. But typically, all the diodes I've ever used in the clinic, you don't use a bias at all. In fact, if you add a bias like we normally do for a farmer chamber, then you're very likely going to actually damage the diode and it's not going to work at all. And hopefully, it's the best case. If it does work, it's going to be faulty and then your readings are going to be off and that could lead to a scary situation. So remember, no bias on your diodes. So what is the calibration process? So for, it depends on the clinic. Normally they're all very close to being similar though. So you want to put the diode under 100 CM plus Dmax for that distance. So you would need phantom material and every clinic uses a little different setup and how you use solid water and maybe some like uh, bolus material, something to get that Dmax. And ultimately, you want this because that is where you are going to get one centigrade per monitor unit. That is your goal. That's why you're putting it 1 cm plus D max. Then we measure the voltage. So what voltage makes a 1 centigrade per MU? So typically, you have a calibration factor. You ensure that your diode is, in fact, going to get that 1 centigrade per monitor unit when you have all of the test parameters correct. So typically a 10 by 10 field, 100 CM SSD plus D max, and obviously open jaws and uh, things of that nature. And of course, for the correct energy, that is what's going to determine that D max value. So do we correct for temperature and pressure? So we do not correct for pressure, but we do correct for temperature because with temperature, you get a uncertainty of 0.5% per degree Celsius. So temperature can make a pretty big impact on your results. That is why we do correct for it. Now, how are diodes dependent on SSD field size, things of that nature? So 
diodes, and here's what we got. SSD, there is a weak dependence. I'm going to say 2%. So nothing uh, drastic, but it does play a factor, the SSD. And when you use that, the diode underestimates the dose when the SSD is increased. So for field size, I'd say it is dependent up to 5% for large fields, and that underestimates the dose. So that is very important for field size that you get that correct. The scatter makes a really big deal when you are using diodes. And then finally, let's talk about the angle. And they are also dependent on the angle. And the deviations are anywhere from 2 to 5%, which is why it's very important, especially for those photons. You remember, we have a different shape than we do for the electron diodes. And that's because you need to account for the fact that with photons, normally with VMAT, IMRT, your fields are either your gantry is going to be rotating as it delivers dose, or if nothing else, the gantry is going to be stopping at different positions. So there's going to be different angles of incidence of the radiation. So we have that different shaped kind of the cylindrical shaped diode rather than the very flat electron where, you know, the radiation incidence is only going to be from one direction so it can be flat. So if a diode is 10% off, then what, what do you do in a clinic? And let's just talk about all, all of the action items and levels. So if it is less than 5%, there's no problem. You are good to go. There's so many variables that 5% and less is a very good number. And you could feel safe knowing that you are delivering very close to what you are intending. Now, if you get 5 to 10%, that's where I would say you would want a physics review. Now, the things you're going to review are one, the setup, one is the how the diode was placed, right? And this is different whether you're doing QA or if you are doing an actual patient treatment. If it's a patient treatment, it's a little more understandable. If you're doing QA and are in this range, you really need to look at your setting parameters. You want to look what's the last time your monthly was done. Is your beam calibrated? Look at your daily QA. And then you would want to consider using a different diode or really investigating that specific diode more carefully. And then if it's greater than 10%, you do a full-on investigation. And I would recommend not using that diode until that investigation is over. And you've either deemed there were settings or something wrong with the setup, or that diode may need replaced. So those are the action levels you would want to use within a clinic. If you have any questions about diodes, please comment below. I think this is a very important device to know, not only clinically and for your knowledge as a clinical physicist, but also for the exam. They could easily, I could imagine asking diodes and asking a multitude of questions from theory to clinical knowledge about it. So it's important to know it in its entirety. I'm here to help if you need anything. Please comment below. Thank you for watching.